Hi and welcome uh, to another video. Um, it's in the kind of I've finished series because uh, it seemed the best place to put it but it's something very very different today. Um, so this is um, a small etched uh, plaque. It's the kind of thing that's given out to people when they display uh, exhibit a layout um, at a, an exhibition um, and as you can see this was from Expo Narrow Gauge in 2015. Um, it was an um, exhibition run by the Greenwich and District Narrow Gauge Railway Society. Um, and I got this um, for exhibiting something. Um, it's the only one of these I have. It's the only time I've um, exhibited anything. Um, and I thought I'd show you uh, what that was today. Um, as I say, these are normally given out to people who exhibit layouts. You'll often see them kind of glued to the, the information board. Um, I didn't take a layout to um, Expo uh, NG in 2015. Um, you'll have heard about this exhibit exhibition once before on the channel because it's where we um, launched the kit for the 24 horsepower Hudson Huntsler in 009 gauge, the tiny little um, the loco. Um, and basically because I knew I was going to be going to the show, um, I thought I'd have a go at their competition. So every year, or usually anyway, they used to hold a challenge competition um, named in one of, in honour of one of the kind of um, founding members um, who'd, who'd, who'd sadly passed away. So um, Dave Brewer. Um, so yeah, so the Dave Brewer challenge. Um, and that year the challenge was to build a diorama with a bridge. Um, so there was no... Uh, need for it to be working necessarily there was very few um, very few kind of uh, restrictions on what you built the only thing was that depending on the gauge of track you were using um, that set the maximum size you could build your diorama to um, so because I was going to London on the train for this um, I went for one of the the kind of the small option and built a very small uh, diorama in a rather odd uh, odd scale so let's show you the diorama and we will talk about it um, so this is the diorama so as you can see there is a there is a bridge um, not a huge amount of track uh, but uh, there is track um, it's not in a particularly normal modeling scale so um, this is built on based on a real a real bridge and a real scene uh, I'll put some photos up on the screen um, it's a bridge on what was a two foot gauge railway across uh, a stream known as Blackerty Water uh, on Ducal Moor in Scotland um, it was a grouse shooting railway so it was intended to kind of move uh, people and guns between the shooting butts uh, the railway had gone out of use uh, quite a number of years ago um, and the railway was kind of slowly being um, swallowed back into the into the moorland but um, I'd spent ages trying to come up with an idea for the challenge and I kind of almost given up really um, because I couldn't come up with anything I couldn't think anything up just randomly that I was at all inspired by um, or that I thought would work well um, but I had one last kind of hunt around uh, on the internet to look for a kind of inspiration uh, and, and a photo popped up and as I say I'll, I'll put the photo up on the screen um, and instantly I had a, a good feeling about it um, and as I say a little bit more uh, research and I came across uh, I think there was a Wikipedia page initially that I came across uh, that told you a bit more about uh, the railway and uh, and the bridge um, but I, I'd managed to find a, quite a number of photos um, and they were enough to kind of give me an idea that I could I could kind of do this kind of stream coming through uh, bridge over uh, and you would have numerous numerous vantage points so the original photo I saw was kind of from this angle uh, looking along kind of upstream under the bridge uh, not much view of the actual track but I'd also seen one that was kind of looking uh, this kind of angle so somebody stood um, on the more looking across the bridge uh, which I also thought was was quite good uh, and I've since also seen a photo uh, taken this way actually with a loco running across um, across the bridge and as I say I'll, I'll put some of these up on the on the screen as we talk um, so yeah so um, 
Also, uh, when I set about building this, I'd basically done no good scenery work before. I'd built one uh, layout for home use, a very small end gauge layout, um, basically just a, an oval of set track and a siding. Um, it got essentially chucked eventually. Um, the track didn't work very well. Uh, the scenery there was there was good things about it, but I it, and I learned a lot, but. I was never happy with it, partly because the the scale and gauge was wasn't something I was particularly fond of. Um, but I modelled this in the standard kind of four millimeter to the foot gauge, um, and because I wasn't intending to have any trains running on it, it's it's a disused railway. I actually modelled it to the correct gauge of um, eight millimeters for the two foot gauge track. Now. That obviously presents a slight problem in the fact that there is no off-the-shelf 8mm gauge track I could use to model this. Um, so everything you can see here is essentially hand-built. Um, so um, this is, if I bring this across, this is the first piece of track I built. Um, so I can get the camera to focus. Um, to see if I could work out kind of how to hand-build um, track uh, and paint the, the sleepers. Um, so this is, um, these are pieces of wood um, for the for the sleepers, um, rail, um, standard, it's quite a lightweight, obviously as you can see, uh, rail. Um, I think it was originally, I think it's a, a very fine end gauge rail, I can't actually remember now. Um, but this is all hand spiked as well, so each of these, each of these sleepers has six holes drilled in it, two on the outside of the rail and one on the inside uh, and then there, there are metal spikes driven into each of those holes to hold the rail in place. It's all super glued in place as well just so it doesn't fall apart um, and the track spikes are actually made by cutting up normal uh, staples uh, for, um, for for stapling paper together. Um, so all, all in all there was about 10 hours work in producing this test piece um, obviously, once I'd got the test piece, then making further pieces was was easier. Um, I made lots of jigs. Um, I've just found these in the box with the with the diorama. I can't remember exactly what all the, they're all for, but this one was for making the sleepers. So you can just about see you would slot the wooden strip in this end up against this stop, um, and then you could cut it to length here. But you can also see that if you turn it over, it has the six holes. So you kind of put the, 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 the strip in, drilled the six holes, cut it to length, dropped it out, and you ended up with, um, with a sleeper. They were then, there was then a, a kind of complicated process of, of painting these things um, that involved kind of um, inks and dry brushing and stuff. But you could basically paint all the sleepers kind of well in advance. Um, I did some full size ones and some shorter ones. Um, and you can see there's some staples left over in here as well. So these were these were all kind of staples that were cut down. Essentially, if you think of a staple as being that kind of shape, you cut the two ends off, leaving just a tiny little bit of the of the top. Uh, and then they were blackened uh, using a metal blacking solution. So there was an awful lot of work went into that. Um, but it looks pretty good, as you can see on here. Um, you know, the, the track, I think, works really, really well as kind of old... Uh, decrepit track um, and I made, I did a whole bunch of the test pieces so I did test pieces for working out how to do uh, the rocks and colour them properly uh, test pieces for the water um, lots of test pieces for the for the for the um, heather um, and I just about got worked out how to do all the different pieces and started to build the kind of basic landform um, when I got uh, in, somebody was I was documenting it all on my blog and I'll put a link to the to the series of posts um, and I used I borrowed some photos from a, a website where somebody had been out um, walking across the mall I think somebody that lived locally uh, walking across the mall and taking photos of bits of the railway and I'd been using some of these photos to try and explain to people what I was doing um, and that was a, a man called Bobby Freeman who very kindly offered to um, cycle back up to the bridge and take a whole bunch of photos and a whole bunch of measurements um, and he really did go to town on 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 the number of photos and measurements he sent me um, which meant I redid a few things but it also meant that it, I got it really I could get it really quite accurate um, so 
again it's really difficult to tell on the final model because a lot of the detail is hidden but you can kind of see just about under the bridge there's 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 details of bolts and panels um, that hold the bridge together there's these weird um, metal pieces sticking out the side underneath the deck of the bridge um, all that is prototypically accurate I think the actual I mean I think this this bit is ever so slightly too wide um, but only just and that was just I obviously didn't quite get things into the position I wanted as I as I put it together um, but yeah there was a it was there was there was it was very kind of him as I say he cycled he cycled up um, which means I have a photo um, again from this angle ish uh, and I'm, again I'll put it up on screen with his bike propped up on here which gives you a an idea of scale um, and I actually kind of replicated his photo uh, because I built a mountain bike um, so that's made of um, essentially brass wire the whole thing's just brass and soldered together um, it's not aged well it's been stored inside a tissue uh, and the tissue has gone kind of all furry on it um, but it was it was useful I was going to leave it on the model during the competition for a sense of scale but I decided in the end it was kind of it set the time period too much I wanted a uh, the diorama to be kind of timeless of a, just a disused railway so I didn't use it in the end um, but it was nice to be able to kind of replicate his his photo and as I say I'll, I'll put that up on the screen as well um, so yeah so um, there was an awful lot of kind of um, as I say learning uh, process went into this working out how to do the the heather um, looking at the screen on the camera the heather's coming up very blue um, in real life it is much more purple um, it's quite it's 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 pretty good um, again I'll try and put some photos up on the screen of different angles so you get a better potentially a better better view of the color um, but there's all sorts of things going on in here so um, I cast this upright concrete block um, as well as as casting uh, these these mas this masonry thing so this was cast as a as a bigger piece and then scribbed uh, with a dental pick to give the the, the rocks um, there's there's gra lots of grass tufts um, static grass which was the first time I'd used static grass um, to get some more of the kind of the open moorland um, got a slightly boggier section of moorland down here um, the river um, is interesting it's it, it's it's I mean it's obviously meant to be kind of peaty and moorlandish um, so I had to kind of get that brown brown color without um, without and it, it, it's difficult to do that and get some an instant a sense of depth uh, to the water um, what I ended up doing was pouring um, a number of thin layers and then painting on the top of the previous layer before I poured the next one um, using um, just watered down acrylic paint um, to give some kind of depth and colour to it uh, without kind of you know you can still see through the thin layers of paint or the layer of water before below so it gives a nice um, a nice effect um, the white water is quite interesting as well so um, I wanted something that had some kind of more depth to the white than just kind of dry brushing onto the surface so this is actually um, cotton wool that was kind of teased out thin then coated in the in the water solution um, and then kind of glued on was glued in place and that the, it, it gives some, kind of some kind of depth to the water it's not quite just on the surface it's kind of obviously in the plastic it resin uh, water makes it look a bit more like it's um, foaming um, yeah um, and I was really pleased with this as I say it's uh, it was the first time I've kind of exhibited something it was the first time I'd kind of deliberately entered a competition I know the the test model for the Hudson Hunslet um, got a, a second prize um, at the 09 AGM but I'd not deliberately entered it I'd kind of put it in the case just for people to look at as much as anything else whereas this thing I'd spent a lot of time specifically doing it as part of a uh, a competition um, and yeah and as I say it was kind of it's almost the first piece I did that took me into 
um, doing the kind of history style articles as well um, because as well as obviously I did a lot of research into the, the bridge and the railways it is now uh, but that got me kind of interested in the railway as it used to be um, and I wrote a long a reasonably long um, article on Scottish grouse shooting railways as a, a product of, of doing this which covered uh, this and another railway. Uh, again, I'll, I'll put a link in the description to the to where you can find that article. Um, but yeah, it was um, it was good fun. And as I say, it's uh, you know it's it's held up well. Um, I mean, it's been stored in a box. It's not been out in in, in the sunlight. But it's uh, I'm still really really happy with this. The kind of the attention to detail, the things I learnt, uh, the kind of historical accuracy. Um, yeah, they're all things I'm really super proud of. Um, there is actually a grouse hidden on here, given it's a grouse shooting railway. You might not be able to see it. It's really, really small. Uh, again, I'll put photos up. It's just here. The little black grouse with its red, red wattle. Um, you can probably just about see it there, hiding in the in the grass. Um, not very many people spotted it on the day. I had a had a sheet up um, suggesting to people that they could uh, they could hunt for the grouse. Um, <coughs> I think they could hunt for the grouse. Did I mention it in here? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so this was this was the thing I kind of put on the display uh, next to it um, to tell people about it. Um, so yeah, I'm really really happy with it. As I say, it's the um, pretty much the only piece of scenic modelling I've ever really done. Um, I definitely don't have space for a full, hugely detailed layout in the house. Um, one of the reasons I've ended up doing. More kind of 16 millimeter stuff with maybe the intention of of being able to run things on the on the lawn or possibly slightly more permanently in the garden long term um because you know modern houses and children um don't necessarily give you lots of space for for layouts um but i think i'm intending to build um some more dioramas possibly slightly bigger than this one um as i've said in a previous visit video the um the tiny little uh bagley McEwen pratt loco um that doesn't run very well i have an idea for a, a diorama i want to build for that um so again there'll be very different scenics um it, it's not at all wild marland um so hopefully there'll be there'll be something similar there um but yeah um so yeah i'll put up some more photos and things on the screen during the the discussion um so you can have a better idea of how i went about uh about building it um i did write an article um for narrow gauge um industrial railway modeling review uh, about the the build process so again I'll, I'll link to the issue in the in the description but if um if people are interested in anything specific um that i that i've done on this whether you know whether that's how i i don't know how more details on how i did the track or the water or the the heather or the rocks or whatever um, leave a suggestion in the comments and I can come back and do a, a more detailed video. I might even be able to kind of, um, do, do a kind of recreate some of the details, um, for a video if people are, people are interested in, but for now, I just thought I'd, uh, I'd show it. As I say, it's, uh, um, yeah, it's, I, I think it's, I think it's really, really nice. Um, as I say, it didn't, it didn't win the competition, but that was never, that was never particularly the intention. It would have been nice, but it wasn't, it wasn't the intention. The intention was to was to learn and have fun um, and um, yeah to, to build this essentially from completely from raw materials um, given that the you know the track and the, and everything is, is hand built um, I was really really proud of so yeah um, hopefully you've enjoyed that as I say something a little different to the the builds of the the locos and things um, and yeah we'll 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 see um, hopefully it won't be too long before I try building the the diorama for that for the other the other loco i have some ideas i just need to sort some materials really uh, and then maybe there'll be another another series of videos on that one or at least a, a finished building uh video when i when i've done that one